Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Magnetic Entrepreneur Podcast. Unfortunately, my guest, Dr. Ted Corrin, couldn't be here with us today. But instead, I have an amazing guy fill in, and uh, we're going to have uh, a fantastic talk. You all know him. I mean, (laughs) he is the one and only Robert J. Moore. And he uh, is going to uh, be here with me today. And we're going to talk about an amazing project that uh, I have been honored to be a part of. So help me welcome Robert J. Moore on his own podcast. (laughs) Hi, Robert. How are you? Good. Nice to see you again. (laughs) Nothing like surprising me. I guess you're learning from me, eh? Uh, Well, you know what? Uh, you're, you know, you've, if you've taught me one thing is always jump on opportunities. That's right. That's right. right. So, yeah. uh, sorry to call on you like that last minute. My guest, uh, was, uh, uh not able to attend today. So, um, uh, okay. you know what? I don't have to have my, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with another student that, as you know, right. But, uh, I mean, we, we postpone that anyways. It's okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, for coming on. And so, uh, I mean, you just published this amazing book, uh, Robert, Turning Point 2020. And so, uh, it's a it's a grand project. Uh, as we're speaking, there's a conference going on right now, Turning Point 2020. It's a world conference put on by World Organization of Natural Medicine, and um, it's uh, it's a global event. Um, I was fortunate to be a part of this uh, on Sunday alongside some of your amazing uh, speakers that were a part of your sec- section of inspiration. And it was so much fun to do that amazing thing. We spoke to over a million people uh, all over the globe, and it was just such a fantastic opportunity for me. How was your, um, I mean, I know you've done a lot of speeches on all, all uh, you know, all kinds of stages, but how was it for you? How was the experience for you? You know, the person, the chairperson, Brian Gangle, really put a good a lot of effort into it. I got to give him a lot of credit. Him and I worked a lot of hours together, sometimes one o'clock in the morning because we're, we're working on getting the book together. People are coming in, people are dropping out. I mean, it's just fluke how things are happening. And then to put this actually together, um, this is like 25 of the top people in there that are, I mean, that chose to be. There's other people that are, are top of the world. They're all 50 people, top people in the world that are speaking. But at the same time, if you look at the situation, we were lucky enough to be a part of this book, right? I mean, I was asked as a speaker and, and the publisher of the book, as you can see, there's a bunch of people on the back. I'm there, Della's up there, my business partner over there, Lori, and I brought a few other people in that were high end. I didn't want anybody in there with less than 75,000 people. And the reason why I wanted them to have that many followers is because this is a big enough event that can change not only them, but changing the world. So if you got 75,000 people, and if he's got 75,000 people, this person's got 75,000 people, well, that's a lot of people we're changing. And we only get 1% of those or 2% or up to 5%. It's a good turnout. You know, so that way, I mean, you had people from Iran on, on there when you were speaking, a numerous amount of people. Yes. So, I mean, that's, that was a beautiful thing. So I see the following you have from Iran because I saw your YouTube when you were doing your YouTube there, and I couldn't, I didn't understand the word was going on. <laughs> but I, I, I did use Google Translate. Yes, you did good. <laughs> that was I awesome. I did do Google Translate, and I put it in there perfectly. What I wanted, I was hoping it turned out perfectly. It turned out really great, actually. <laughs> and I put it in there, and I guess it shocked you a bit because you asked me. It did. I looked at I looked at the comment, and it was written in in Iranian, and it's Robert's uh, name on there. I'm like, what? How did he do that? It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, for sure. It was. But I mean, I like this is things, so. You know what? Uh, I mean, technology has allowed us to reach. Um, a large audience, Robert, and I, I would have never imagined this to happen for me. Uh, you know, going back to 
just last March, when before I met you, uh, I I could not have imagined this happening for me so quickly. Uh, and so to be able to actually speak to over a million people was just out of this world for me. Uh, so I want to thank you, but also I want to this to be a uh, really a testament to the work you do because I I know that a lot of people are noticing uh, just how um, quickly I'm progressing in in what I'm doing and they're reaching out to me and they they want to know they're very happy for me but they also want to know how I'm doing all these things I'm doing in the space of six months I have um, been published four times I have spoken on the world's biggest stage. I have, uh, you know, uh, taken Della's voice to a whole new level. I have become the host of uh, this podcast. Uh, I have an amazing uh, collaboration with another two ladies on the butterfly effect. And I've also started uh, my Iranian show uh, just last week that launched with amazing success. So I, I want to bring this back to you, Robert. Um, how is it you help people? Uh, Before and, you bring uh, it back to me, yeah. is, um, yeah. I want to say one thing. You're also interviewing some of the top people in the world. Amazing people. You know, like yes. uh, you got what, Thursday coming up, Dr. Joe Vitale. Dr. Um, Joe Vitale on Thursday. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm the so movie excited. The Secret. In the movie <laughs> The Secret. Um, I just sent him books to his address, and he got the books overnight. Um, he's part of this book, too. Yes, right, so you yes. co-authored a book with him. Oh, you're, you know, right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Amazing what you don't know, and it's right in front of your face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Della, yes. I, I give you a lot of credit. Um, Thank you. You you are involved with my Facebook. You're involved in my YouTube. You're involved in the stuff that we do. Um, so that allows you to have access to over a hundred thousand people. Right. So, I mean, that's a beautiful access. It's a beautiful thing to do. And you're doing a magnificent job. Thank you. It's because you're putting your passion into it. You're putting the passion there. I mean, it's you're telling me you're talking the other day online and your mom and your husband's out in the hallway listening to you. I said, why don't they just go on the screen and look? <laughs> Well, no, no they, they didn't have access, but at that point, they they just wanted to hear me talk, and they weren't allowed in the room because I was too I was too nervous. You were nervous because I talked to you minutes before. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. How many people are watching right now? And I said, I'll tell you afterwards. I already knew. I didn't want to tell you. It, to me, it was like, it was nothing. It was just, you know, I mean, no big deal. I mean, it's a million people. It's not a big deal. But overall, at the end, I mean, you got to look at the end picture. It's not just a million, 200,000 people. You got to look at the end picture at the end of the whole conference. That's how many people are actually engaging in, in all this. So there could be 30, 40, 100 million. So that's, I mean, you could use that as leveraging yourself too. It's one of the biggest stages I think you'll ever be on. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it, it is one of the biggest I've been on. I, I have spoken before to 200, 300,000 people at once. You know, when I was on with Tony Robbins that time, 225 or something like that. So, I mean, I've spoken on stage with some of the top people in the world and including some more. Right. Well, this is this is what you do, though. Like you see you see something you see something big. And I know that in you asked me, you, you said, are you ready? Uh, you know, are you ready for for the big stage? This is even before you even told me that you were going to put me uh, as a part of this panel. You asked me the question, are you ready? And it took me that split second to say, no, not, I'm not ready yet because of fear. You know, um, we let fear block us, uh, you know, in, in so many different ways in our lives, in our professions, in our relationships. But that fear, uh, it's the old habit. So, so it took me that split second, but then I shook it off. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am as ready as I will ever be. You would uh, otherwise have to wait another year for an opportunity like that. Yeah, you, I, or, or not. Or maybe this would be the opportunity that you say no to because you're, you're fearful. Um, I don't say no to opportunities. Like right? Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and and that's why that's why uh, you have made it so far. 
and you have made it so big and I, a lot of people know your story and a lot of people don't know your story if you don't know robert's story we've done a couple of interviews and he's told his story go look it up on on youtube channel on the magnetic entrepreneur or della's voice and look up those those interviews and you'll see where this man comes from and how he's made it to this level and today he's helping over 150,000 people. I know 160,000 people. His That's health. probably a low number, but it's estimated. I think I heard you say that like a while ago. Yeah, it's it's estimated 160, uh, but I think it's kind of low. I think it's a little bit more than that, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as it's over 100,000, as long as it's over some people cheering and, and helping themselves at the end. So the thing is, when you're helping someone else, you got to really understand what the person's about. So I could tell just by looking at you, you could talk about the physiology of the face, the expressions of the face, the body language, you know? So I, I know how to read that and I know how to go to the next question because I was a therapist for 15 years. I was also a counselor for 12 years. So when you learn that aspect, you, and, and I utilized what I did was now, just to back up a bit, I was a drug addict alcoholic 15 years. Yeah. Right. Sober today, 15 years sober today. I also lived on the streets for seven years. And I don't mean living on a couch. I said the streets. That's where I lived in a snowbank, covering myself up, stealing clothes to get myself warm. I didn't care if they fit. I made them fit because they're out of the dryer. So needless to say, I was down that track and I remember eating that sandwich out of the garbage can. The bite marks, I took them off. A person come up to me who threw it in there. And they said, well, listen, how would you like to go and have a nice meal? Sure, I would like that. I was nervous. I didn't want to talk to them. I was embarrassed, right? I, I was kind of stinky because I didn't shower in days. They got me a hotel room, and we went from there. These people end up being good friends of mine. I ended up helping their children out when I actually went through school and got my addictions uh, degree. It was really unique how it all fell down. They got me started on my speaking career. She was absolutely i'm gonna tell you right now she was boring when she spoke it was it was now it was the thing is it was board of education it was on it was on their funding and everything absolute boring nobody wants to hear that stuff nobody wants to hear the finances of of, of the school and that i'm in like this is adult learning center and it's like i'm going back to get my golf and these people are like 15 20 years junior to my age and they're like, they don't want to hear this. They're all talking amongst themselves. So I took the took the initiative to go up and say, listen, I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for breaking up the day. I didn't tell her she was boring, right? It wasn't her boring. It was her talk. It was just something I couldn't relate to, right? Like, who, who can relate to something like that? It was just like, wow. So a trustee for a school, like, okay, that's cool. And <laughs> I didn't know I was going to become friends because of me talking to her like that. And she talked to me for five minutes. She goes, I would love to hear you speak. So we went and spoke a few spots. And then she says, Robert, why didn't you ask for money? I said, what do you mean? I was like you at first. I said, well, I just want to speak to them, get my message out there. She goes, but you're worth money. I said, what do you mean I'm worth money? I said, I kind of like felt weird. So I said, okay. Well, she goes, I'm going to set up another talk in Barrie, Ontario, in Canada. And I'll set it up that you go in there and speak to two different classes, and, you know, but one at one time, one at another time. What will you charge them? And this really got me. This really got me. I didn't put my worth out there. I didn't know my worth at the time. I didn't have to do my value or anything. I said, just give me a couple hundred dollars, one for each. The lady wrote me the check. I put it in my pocket. I was happy with that. I, oh, boy, I was like gold. I was walking out, and I overheard them say, we thought this guy was going to charge about eighteen dollars to $2,000. That would have helped us with the budget. And I said, you dirty buggers. <laughs> <laughs> now, you should have said something when I was there, you know, like I could have, I could have enhanced that real quick, but I didn't know. So I said, listen, I said, you know, I, I backtracked myself back and I said, listen, I just spoke today. Um, I was wondering, maybe you guys want me to come back next week. I said, I just wanted to do a little trial run to see how you, and I, and I played it. Right. So then I did go back and get the 1800. Right. So I did go back at the 1800, got my worth. I said, wow, $1,800 for a two hour speech. This is like cool. So I, I wanted to find myself, learn how to speak better. I wanted to learn how to get up on those stages. 
So I hired uh, I hired a few people. I hired 52 of the top achievers in the world I studied. I can't say I really hired them all because some of them are deceased, but I checked out their Facebook. I checked out their, their family. Um, I dealt with like the Ziegler family, right? I talked to them and I was working with them for a while and Eric Thomas and Les Brown. And it led me to working with a lot of high-end people to people that are just beginning. Now, I don't want to forget where I came from. And that's why I love working with the people that just begin. Because I know how to enhance them. See, a lot of people that get so big, they can only go from the level where I'm at now and bring me to the next level. Well, I'm comfortable right where I'm at. I'm okay where I'm at. Because I want to bring those people from down below where I used to be to the level where I'm at now. And then if they pass me, all right, cool. But I'm always doing extra stuff to keep going. I got three different. You are, because I was going to say, you keep going too. You keep growing. And it's like, the more you grow, the more, like, I, I'm i I'm like, okay, I, I, I need to hurry this up. Like, I need, <laughs> I need to do more. I need to do more. Robert, let's say hi to uh, some people that are watching. Hi, some somebody. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's start from the beginning. Kamran, hello, uh, and Marianne, Simone. Uh, I see uh, uh, Hamade, Lizzie, uh, Farida. Oh, I see uh, Mama on there. <laughs> yeah, my Mama's always on there, right? And Simone is always on there. There are some people who are always, always. Good morning, you both from the UK. Yes. And we've got uh, Emilio Roman. I'm on with Emilio, seven o'clock this morning. He's on there and on there with him this morning, and and uh, you know something something that people always say is, I don't have the money through this pandemic going on. Well, is that a choice that you chose to choose? Is that something you just want to bury yourself under? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know many people that are not making money. Della's here; she's she's making money while doing this. I'm making money. A lot of my friends are all making money. And the thing is, I'll tell you why. It's not about the money. It's about the value you're putting out there. It's about letting people see the ROI, the return on their investment. If someone's paying me $5 or $100,000, I still want to do 120% no matter what. I want to look at them. I want to say, okay, here's what we need. Now, a lot of people need to learn how to do things online, which they don't know how to do. Mm -hmm. There's a proper way of doing it. And, and as you know, there's, I mean, I've taught you quite a few different ways how to market it in different ways that you actually bring people to you. And like, it's like before, well, Robert, I need people. I need people. So I just spread the word a bit and people will come. Now it's like they're coming right to you. They're coming. Yes. They want to be interviewed by me, Robert. They do. <laughs> Cause I bring out, I bring out the story. Um, well, Jennifer, Jennifer, I was just on with, um, she wants to be on with you. Yeah. Um, if you could book a time with her to get yeah. her going. Bill Emilio here. Um, he wants uh, he wants some time to be on there too because he's been in the book, um, and his wife too. His wife too. If they want to get them both together, it's fine. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Oh look, we've got Greg Walker. What's up, family? He the said. Big dreamer. What's up, Greg? Big dreamer, brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Hirud uh, and Rizwan. Uh, Rizwan is another one of those fantastic people who uh, has worked with you. And I know uh, that he thinks very highly of you, Robert. Um, Robert, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Well, Magnetic Entrepreneur, either YouTube or you got uh, Facebook. Um, or Lincoln or Robert J. Moore, you got on. Now, I don't accept everybody as a friend. I got a lot of friends on there, but if you're not willing to go organically, and if you're just jumping on there trying to do a sale with me, you're going to get blocked. I don't, I'm not into that. I, if, if you want to do organically, get to know me, get to know you. We could share each other's business and we could hopefully help each other. But I'm not going to sit there and jump on there and, and buy your stuff. Not without knowing who you are, what's going on. Thank you, thank you. Uh, reach him if you if if you want to um, have a chat with him. Um, looks like we've got Dr. Corin joining us, Robert. So uh, I'm going to bring him on? on. Bring him on. Yes, I'm going to bring him on. Dr. Corin uh, is one of the speakers on uh, turning 
Point 2020 uh, World uh, Conference put on by World Organization yeah. of <laughs> Natural Medicine. There he is. He was also a participant in the book Turning Point 2020. Uh, please let us know if you want to purchase this book. Uh, proceeds will uh, also go to WONM. And um, it, there's lots of great stories on there. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking to Dr. Ted Korn. We're going to bring him on. So help, please. So Rizwan said, Robert will reply Facebook messages in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes, he will. Okay, here he is, Dr. Korn. And turn that off. I don't I never time for us to showcase some cases where we are able to to bring forward some better ideas and leave it before the cost. And I saw in the background there. So yeah, it's probably something that's open, an app that's open on your computer. Respiratory illness okay, with symptoms ranging okay, from no problem. Like signs uh, to yes, severe pneumonia in related. No worries. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, give you a couple of minutes. So just just give me a thumbs up when you're ready, okay? Healthcare facilities. You know what it is. People are avoiding public like spaces out of fear. <laughs> Technology is great, right? Technology it, it is. is great. It, you're not. You're gonna laugh at this. I have to laugh at this. I have to say it, and and I I could say it right on the turning point. There is a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, that are very highly intelligent as, as PhDs, doctor, medical doctors, you name it. But when it comes to technology, they are stumbling. For well, instance, for instance. We're learning. You know, well, for instance, there's another guy on here right now, right? Greg Walker. Uh, he only uses his phone for everything. Right? <laughs> oh, Greg. He, he won't use a computer. He'd rather throw the computer out the window. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you ready, Dr. Corin? Give me thumbs up if you're ready. We can't hear you. You have to give us a thumbs up if you're ready. Oh, good. He's ready. Okay, here we go. The so turmoil caused by such a pandemic stuff. will last for years. The <laughs> uh, Dr. Korn, what if you leave the broadcast and turn off whatever is working and then get back on? Oh, believe me, I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. <laughs> and I know it's just somewhere. I, if, please, please accept my apologies. Oh, please. don't worry. Uh, sounds like you got it. Uh, did I? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I did. There you go. You're, You're on. Right. And I have no idea what I did. On May 4th, 2020. <laughs> now, you got, now you got a new, new session starting. <laughs> okay, free okay. entertainment. Okay. Just okay. don't do that when you're on the turning point. We are laughing. No, no the turning point, I'll turn first. off absolutely As everything father, in the background. Oh, you're listening to the, on the conference, are you? That's. In a moment. That's no, not the conference. I don't start till 6 p.m. Well, Dr. Corrin, I'm going to uh, ask you to please um, leave the oh, wait, 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 wait. You got it? Yay! I love it. Awesome. I promise to comb my hair. Um, let me turn on the light, see if this will work. I think you're good. <laughs> I have no idea why I, I couldn't find that. That's okay. And it just, yeah, I've done it before. As it, oh. Perfect. Ooh, look at that green color. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah well, green screen, yeah. There we go. Brian told me I can use the green screen, and it'll. there's a certain feature that I can use to make it look prettier and nicer. Well, yeah, you can do the background, yeah. I think I think it's great, Dr. Corn. We've had some people uh, on on the broadcast waiting uh, to uh, to hear you. So let's say let's say hi to everybody. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. And um, Elaine wants to know how sh she can purchase a book. Reach me, Elaine. PM me. I will send yep. it to you. Yeah, you got your books right on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Dr. Corrin, your tell us a little bit read, about yourself, please, Dr. Corrin. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to talk about this tonight, of course. And mm -hmm. that is, uh, you know how uh, they talk about things being a blessing in disguise? Mm -hmm. Well, that happened to me. I was in a really bad accident, and I, was, I had a concussion, whiplash, and severe pains all over my body. And I was disabled. I couldn't use my 
I was in horrible pain all the time. Couldn't use my hands, uh, could barely hold anything. Hands, fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, neck, head, uh, mid-back. And I also suffered from incredibly intense sciatica. Some days I couldn't walk more than a few feet. So uh, this went on. Well, I started seeing every doctor I knew. I know a lot of doctors. I traveled all over the US. I saw between 40 and 50 different healers and doctors, chiropractors, physical therapists, osteopaths, medical doctors, acupuncture, craniosacral therapy, name it. I had it done on me. The pains never went away and started deteriorating. And I didn't want to resort, I didn't, well, well, like what happened to my other relatives who had back surgery, hip replacements, pain injections, painkillers, steroids, what have you. I didn't want to wind up like them, but I, I didn't know what else to do. I was, I was really lost. So after I suffered for 10 years, after 10, 10 years of suffering, the pains were getting worse. Uh, I was, I, some days I couldn't walk more than a few feet. So what I did was I took matters into my own hands and I had nowhere else to go. And I found if I combined concepts from a few different healing procedures uh, using an instrument that was commercially available, I would know exactly where my blockages were, where the interference, the blockage, the imbalance and correct it and know if it were corrected. Okay, this was just came up to me because the synergy was more powerful than the individual procedures. Nobody had ever put them together before. And after about uh, five days, I was all better. Well, upper extremities, my, my sciatica, low back problems, hip problems, I'd had for 30 years by that time. That took about six weeks to totally disappear. It would have taken sooner, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was my first patient. In so later be called Dr. Curran, how long so you this this you you started healing all these pains in matters of days and you had been suffering for how long at that point? Ten, ten years. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well the low back, the sciatica, the disc problems, the hip problems, they were going on for about 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Like, much worse after my accident. Uh they took about six weeks to disappear, but they I'd had them 30 years. But like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was experimenting on myself. My next patient was my wife, Beth, who had had migraines for 12 years. No one could help her. Uh, I checked her, took, uh, took less than a minute to find out where the blockage was. I tapped it using an instrument, and it never came back. And it's been like 15 years now, no migraines. So uh, then I thought, well, does this only work on chiropractors and their wives? Very small. <laughs> Select people only. Absolutely. <laughs> From Brooklyn. <laughs> From Brooklyn. <laughs> so I began to uh, experiment. Well, actually, I would go to seminars and I would look for the worst patients in the world. Who would that be? Doctors that nobody else could help. Yeah, of course. Doctors that had been to everybody and they were still suffering from all kinds of health problems. And I made an announcement. I'd say, by the way, uh, anybody here with a chronic health issue, no one's been able to help you. You've seen lots of doctors. See me during the break because I was a lecturer and speaker. And, and I dismissed everyone. And I figured one or two people would stop by. Uh, the line went out the door. There were so, everybody was so many problems. Uh, the responses, the results were so dramatic and intense and powerful. Uh, later, they'd ask, can I bring my wife? Can I bring my kids? Can I bring my office workers? And uh, actually, people didn't know this, but I had given up my license to practice because I couldn't use my hands. I mean, if you're a chiropractor and you can't use your hands, we're in pretty bad shape. Yeah, and, that, uh, that was in your book, in your chapter, yes. Right, so I, I got my hands back <laughs> and I got my practice back and I started teaching. And I've taught about 4,000 people, not just chiropractors, but we have... Uh, physical therapists, osteopaths, massage therapists, medical doctors, dentists, psychologists, uh, all kinds, and lay people. Because in my opinion, anyone can be a healer. And it should not be restricted to one class of people, as uh, Benjamin Rush had said in the declaration, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, we need freedom of choice. 
And you can't have freedom of choice if you have monopolies. So I open my seminars to everyone, mostly because I'm a chiropractor. I'm well known in the chiropractic profession. In America, lots and lots of chiropractors come. But in uh, Canada and Europe, uh, I get a lot of natural healers in addition to chiropractors in America, too. But a uh, nice variety of people that I've lectured in Taiwan and Australia and uh, Israel and Italy and uh, France and London, uh, England, and there are many times, a lot of places. So, so are you ta teaching this to other people, to, uh, Dr. Curran? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, live seminars. We're doing one the first weekend in November in Philadelphia coming up, and we're doing a uh, lot, we have home study as well. I always recommend people do a home study and then come to a live seminar because they understand the concepts better, they're more comfortable with it, and then they come to learn more. But this is, natural healing and it relates not it's not just a chiropractic healing procedure and i want to be clear on that the goal of natural healers and this goes back probably three thousand years there's been a war between the vitalists and the mechanists then the, the uh rational the so-called so -called the empiricists and the rationalists and i have to the, explain uh, that a little bit dr Krein, okay please I In, I will. like to a to a seven-year-old if you will what no is problem. what are we talking about? What, yeah, vitalists versus mechanists. And this has been going on for decades. Hold on a second. Okay. About that. Uh, this has been going on for decades. The vitalists say uh, we have to look for we, we're naturally perfect and healthy. If there's disease, if there's some problem, symptoms, we have to know what's causing them. We look for the imbalance. We look for what's blocking. Natural healing. Is it physical? Is it emotional? Is it toxicity? Is it chemical? Whatever it is, we have to explore it and get rid of the blockages so a person's natural healing ability can come to the surface. That is the, the vitalistic healing arts. And this uh, chiropractors call it a subluxation, osteopaths call it a lesion. The acupuncturists look for the blockages in chi or life energy. Meridian blockages, same thing in Ayurvedic medicine. This is international and it's thousands of years old. The mechanists are the other ones. They're the medical model. And that model says we're going to name and treat a disease. And this is a big difference because according to vitalists, and the homeopaths are really into this very much, you have as many different diseases as you have people. Everyone is totally unique. You don't want cookie cutter medicine. You want medicine tailored or healing tailored to the specific needs of that individual. And that's why uh, all healing arts say they practice. All healing artists, healers say they practice because what you find on 90 people with the same conditions, the 91 person might have it in a totally unique way. You can't generalize when it comes to healthcare. And so uh, I learn from every patient. I've never heard that in those terms before. You have as many diseases as you have people. Oh, yeah, in homeopathy in China. And it makes so much sense. This is what's known in all the uh, natural healing arts. You do not generalize, except when it comes to medical care. Uh, my two younger brothers are MDs. Uh, what can I tell you? Every family has a black sheep or two. <laughs> so, uh, so my two younger brothers are MDs. I was actually supposed to be an MD, uh, and they were supposed to follow in my footsteps. But I, I zigged when I should have zagged, I guess. Anyway, um, I remember once my brother Jeff came home with a, a, a little book. Uh, I said, what's this? He said, this is my cookbook. I said, what's that? He was in medical school at the time. He says, well, if a person has this disease, you give him that drug. And if they have this disease, you give them this drug. And if you have that disease, you give them that drug. And it went through a whole list. And that's cookbook medicine. And he referred to it as cookbook medicine. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, too much of medicine is cookbook medicine. Mm -hmm. We generalize. We think everyone is in the same category. The homeopaths, the natural healers, will say, if you look carefully at 100 people with a common cold, with cancer, with heart disease, you will find similarities, yes but you will find a hundred different or a thousand differences in every single person. No two people are alike. And when you concentrate on the uniqueness of that person, you get far better results. 
And this is what, my, what I developed, corner specific technique, or KST, uh, especially looks at the uniqueness of the person. And we use uh, feedback from the body, asking the body questions. Um, in fact, you can say we're asking the information field. Um, people who know muscle testing, short leg reflex, dowsing, pendulums, uh, will understand that this is ancient healing in a modern guise. Uh, the only reason why we do it is because it works really well. And we get people who, re who respond that no other person's been able to help. People ask me, what do you do? And I say, we locate what everybody else misses or nearly everybody else misses. And you can apply it to all kinds of healing arts. I just, I've written two books recently, one on vaccination and one on cancer and chronic illness. Uh, Parkinson's, MS, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, Alzheimer's, diseases that we didn't know about years ago. There's a reason why these are called, there's many of these are called diseases of civilization. Because we're doing things now, we weren't doing then. And what we're doing now is making people sick. And we have to understand traditional ways of healing and eating and taking care of people. So I Dr. hope. Karn. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I have a couple of questions. First of all, you talked about that home study course that people yeah. can, can take. Is there a prerequisite um, for people? Do people have to have some sort of a um, healing background or any medical background in order for them to be able to do well in this course? Uh, a desire to learn and practice. That's that is the prerequisite. Um, in fact, at one seminar, I had a man in his 80s who was working with the other doctors, and he was great. He was flying through everything because at the seminars, the live seminars, we break up and we practice. And uh, I said, I don't recognize you, but, uh, you know, you're doing this really well, but I don't rem remember seeing you before. And he said, oh, I just did your home study. So I said, well, you must have a hell of a practice because I bet, you know, you must see a lot of people because you, you've gotten so proficient, you must practice on a lot of people. He said, I'm not a doctor. He said, I just got this to, to work on myself and my wife and my children and grandchildren. He had no background in healing at all. Amazing. But he said, we have a manual, a 200-page manual, heavily illustrated, and articles I've written and a website and about 16 hours of videos. Great. All it is a desire to learn, and you will be able to probably do things most of the doctors that you know have been unable to do. So, how can people get and get this course? I'll go to corinspecifictechnique.com, K O R E N, Corin Specific, one word, or go to Corin Wellness and click on the tab. Thank um, you. In Corin Wellness, you see all my blogs and articles and stories okay. and uh, how I got this way, you know. Amazing. Uh, also, there's a question, and I, actually, that was my question uh, as well. Um, what about uh, dementia? Uh, someone asks. Dementia. Well, Alzheimer's, I'll start with saying, with Alzheimer's is uh, is is really a, a new disease. It was first named in 1911. Actually, um, it wasn't even known before then. It was of a 50 year old woman. Now, people over 80, half of them die of Alzheimer's. Well, with Alzheimer's or from Alzheimer's, how do you know, term it? But dementia is ancient, apart from Alzheimer's. I think it was Plutarch, the Roman uh, philosopher, who said, uh, I never met an elderly man who forgot where he kept his money. So, <laughs> however, Alzheimer's is unique. Now, they all have similar causes, but Alzheimer's is unique in which people forget their, their loved ones. They forget where they kept their money. They say in regular dementia, you forget where you put your keys. In Alzheimer's, you forget what keys are for. Ah. Um, the, uh, in Alzheimer's, eventually, you lose all your memories, you lose your identity, and you lose your ability to forget how to breathe, ultimately. You stop feeding yourself, you get how to breathe. This is new. This mm -hmm. is a unique kind of brain disorder. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because we have toxicity now that we never had before. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember being at a conference near Washington, D.C. with Dr. Yuf Judenberg, the world's leading immunogeneticist. In fact, he's written many textbooks used in medical schools. And Dr. Judenberg said in his studies, if a person has had five flu shots, one a year, 
for five years, their chance of getting Alzheimer's increases by 10 times. Whoa. And I asked Dr. Feudenberg, what is it in the flu shot that causes Alzheimer's? And he said, it's the mercury. It goes to the brain. And after a few years, you get uh, you know, cognitive problems. Uh, and of course, there's other forms of mercury. There's dental mercury. And other childhood vaccines have mercury, but also aluminum. And we know that there's a lot of research now, not just on mercury, but aluminum as it relates to Alzheimer's, which is also in many vaccines. Uh, however, they do not study, and this is a real serious problem in all vaccine research, they don't study the synergy of various uh, toxic metals at the same time in the body. Uh, LD means lethal dose. LD of one means a lethal dose of 1%. So if you have 100 rats and you and all inject them with a, a lethal dose, LD1, of mercury, you'll get one dead. And if you have 100 rats and you give them an LD1 of, say, lead, they'll have one death. But if you combine LD1 of mercury, LD1 of lead, and put them together, LD1, LD2, you can say, and inject them into the rats, you'll get an LD of 100. All will die. Wow. Because the toxicity is synergistic in many cases. And they are, vaccines are not studied for their synergistic ability uh, to be used. For example, they'll, they'll study the M, the N, and the R. They won't study the MMR. They're studied independently. but it's and, Or they won't study what are the effects of giving this vaccine and that vaccine and that vaccine on the same day to a child or an adult. The reason why there is more toxicity, more chronic illness now, and we're talking MS, Parkinson's, Gehrig's disease, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, of course, is there's more toxicity. And the toxicity is coming from many sources. One of the main ones is dental toxicity. Uh, root canals uh, create tremendous toxicity. Where wisdom teeth are taken out, the extraction sites are usually not cleaned properly. Um, and this is another major form of toxicity. Uh, I had a patient with Parkinson's and with KST, my work, you can actually test very quickly and easily if there's a dental issue. She had all four wisdom teeth taken out and she had Parkinson's and she was 49 years old using two canes. They said she, soon she'd be in a wheelchair. So uh, I checked her, I tested her, I said, you know, you've got four infected wisdom teeth sockets not the teeth, they're out, the sockets, and they're closed up. And she said, well, I had them taken out when I was 19. I said, okay. It took a while, but your body, as, you're, as you age, your immune system, your detoxability wears down. Do something about it. She went to a dentist I recommended, a biological holistic dentist, had them cleaned out, and she was walking 500 feet without a single cane within two weeks. And what? walking with two canes when she came in. Yeah. Oh, and these are not unusual stories. I've heard similar things from biological dentists regarding uh, Lou Gehrig disease, ALS, and regarding MS, and regarding many things. There's actually a book by Hal Huggins, Solving the MS Mystery, and it's all about dental infections, especially mercury and MS. Oh, yeah. This is stuff this is that... This is, why, why don't we hear about this more often? I mean, why does it take why does it take a platform like this to get this information out? Um, or turning point 2020 to get all this information out? Why isn't it more available to the public? Well, I think 2020 is doing a wonderful job. And uh, you're to be commended for your courage, for giving out information that is often blocked by the main media. It's in the scientific journals. Everything I'm telling you is in the biomedical journals. It is there. It's been published. It's been acknowledged. It's known. And it's ignored. Meanwhile, they're watching more and more kids with autism, with ADD, with well, panic attacks, with bipolar disorder. We're, we're seeing sicker and sicker and sicker children with every year, and nobody is looking at the toxins that are being injected into them, the crappy foods that people eat, the, the high fructose corn syrup, which actually has residues of mercury in many cases, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the refined foods, the lack of nutrient-dense foods. Worse than the refined foods is the lack of nutrient-dense foods. 
you can actually eat some crappy foods and still have perfect teeth and be healthy mm -hmm. as long as you have basically a good diet. Mm -hmm. Essentially, I hate to use the word basically, it's so overused. Wow. But as long as you have essentially a good diet. And that's why having people talk about nutrition and toxicity uh, is wonderful. And, and you're to be commended for doing that. So everybody should get this book. Everybody uh, should get, get this book. Dr. Martin, the book. great chapter in here. And yeah. he talks about his KSD um, and uh, the three C's. Uh, Dr. Current, uh, that you you have uh, in in your chapter, the three C's. If I can't tell you. It's no, I uh, yeah, I, I. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, uh, I, I know because I want. I can't help. Uh, <laughs> the three C's is uh, the basics of, of KST, but it's the basis of all natural healing. What I've done, I've just looked for what if it, what does everything have in common? What does everybody have in common? And it's the three C's. Sorry about that noise. No it's challenge, check, and correct. Challenge is asking the body what's wrong. When you defer, when you humble yourself before the wisdom of the body, you get answers that you may not expect but are always right. And KST aligns itself with the natural healing arts that use this to great effect. So you have challenge, and then based on what you ask, you see how the body responds, yes or no, using biofeedback, and then correct. Uh, we use an instrument to correct many, many of the physical and mental problems. Sorry about that noise. No, no worries. Someone cares, Dr. Corn. <coughs> I guess so. Um, I do get people traveling in from all over the country for this care. Of course, I dress better. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the message, Dr. Curran. <laughs> so balance check and correct. Uh, some things that I cannot correct, like dental infections, I would will refer to uh, good holistic dentists. Uh, if a person has a rotten tooth, uh, you want to take it out. If they have a mouthful of mercury, you know, better get that mercury fillings removed. Um, and I always recommend people who want to have babies detox before uh, they get pregnant because mothers detox into their babies. That is why we have so many miscarriages. Uh, you know, biologically speaking, one mother can have dozens of babies, really. And I take care of many large families, not, as, not dozens, but oh, a dozen or more in some cases. Mothers detox into their babies because one mother can have many children and they uh, get rid of their toxins that way. And as a result, uh, you might have a woman having multiple miscarriages simply because the babies are toxic or the fetus is not viable. If that's the case, uh, they really should seriously consider detoxification procedures. And in my book on cancer, I get into a lot of detox procedures. Uh, and I'll I can talk about that if people have questions. But this is very important to know that there's a reason for everything. It's not just bad luck that people get disease. It's not bad luck that kids are born with deformities and problems or people get cancer. There's a reason for everything. And my one of the things I've been writing about and promoting, and of course, with corn specific technique, the procedure I've taught, taught to about 4,000 people so far, mostly doctors, is uh, to ask, to ask the body, what in the world is causing this problem? What is the cause? As one of my students wrote, what is the seed? And dealing with it and correcting it. So, uh, and we are healthier than we think we are. We're born to live a physically and mentally very healthy life. And I have been very fortunate in making some discoveries that had been there, by, been discovered by many, but they never put it together. And the synergy, can be incredibly powerful. One plus one can equal a thousand for a healing perspective, as well as for a harming perspective. You know, if something is powerful for harming, it can also be powerful for healing and vice versa. So my role is to look at what is causing the problem and correct it. Amazing. So um, you're, you're speaking on the conference this evening. Uh, if, uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to tell all the viewers, if you don't have access to the conference, please go ahead to event, Eventbrite and uh, purchase your ticket. This is the this is the level of uh, 
no knowledge that you'll be hearing on the conference. Uh, also, someone wanted the date for your seminar in uh, in Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia, yes. Yeah, it's near the airport. It's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday evening, all day Saturday, half day Sunday. Uh, the first weekend in November. First weekend in November. I and think we have a rule. What is Mask it? Free zone. What kind of free zone? Mask free. Oh, mask free. What is your take on that, Dr. Corn? Uh, they call it a shandemic. Pandemic. I heard pandemic. If you look at the test, the testing is totally uh, impossible to verify. The virus, so-called virus, has never been isolated. It violates Cox postulates. Uh, what we have are a merger of three industries that love to control our lives. They are essentially totalitarian in nature. What are these three industries? First is politics. The second one is the medical profession. And the third is the media. All three want absolute control over our lives. And they have worked together. It's now the ideal marriage of all three to everyone's harm. I mean, we had worse flus in prior years. Why did we never have lockdown or masks then? Not that lockdown or masks even work. We have now an epidemic of people dying from abuse, from drug overdose. We have an epidemic of divorces. We have destruction of our culture from within, and we've done it to ourselves, all because of this phony, uh, what can you call it, uh, so-called virus. It's never been isolated. It's never been proven there even is a virus. The test actually tests for human DNA. So if you come out positive, it means you're human. And this is in the medical literature. This has been revealed. There are now thousands of medical professionals and health professionals that are signing petitions saying, end this charade. It is only given power to the worst class of people, politicians, political MDs, and the media. It is, and there's no proof any of this work, but we have trusted people with our lives that should never have been trusted with being dog catcher. That's how bad it is. Thank you. You know, just not too long ago, was it two years ago, tuberculosis was out there and they never even asked you to wear a mask is and that's airborne. Much, much worse than any so-called flu. Um, yeah. But no, they never asked you to wear a mask though, um, did they? Masks uh, are making people very sick. <laughs> coming down with fungal infections. They're coming down with strep throat. You're breathing in your own waste. I, I don't call them masks. I call them face mm -hmm. diapers. <laughs> you can also call them a face I, I won't wear them, period. If you want to be politically incorrect. But uh, you can't see somebody's face. Uh, keep in mind, people don't know it's a new system that's coming out where they can identify uh -huh. you with a mask on, uh, right? Just something and for you me to look as much as I do. <laughs> what we are doing is creating yeah. a generation of children <laughs> afraid of life and afraid of breathing, mm -hmm. and you and and also be probably losing their ability to socialize properly because they can't see people's faces. I mean, if ever the the cure was mm -hmm. worse than the so-called disease, this is it. How many suicides because people have lost their means of income or lost their meaning in life? Oh, this is just horrible. This, this is the worst mistake humanity has ever made. And it's tragic and what's going on. So at my seminar, <laughs> to, to repeat, we have a mask-free zone. Instead of social distancing, we practice social closeness. And uh, we uh, have a lot of fun. People get worked on at my seminars, and they get they get incredible healing responses. The seminar just to come to get worked on is worth the cost of admission. Uh, also, we have great food, as much as we can from hotels, you know, and uh, a lot of fun and a lot of it's, – it's really a lot of fun. We attract some of the most talented healers in the world. We attract fun people at our seminars and people that, that have true compassion to learning and growing and healing. 
and uh, it's a great opportunity. So if any of your people are interested in coming, November is available. We'll be at the airport in case there's a riot downtown Philadelphia. People have actually asked me about that, you know, yeah. and I don't think there'll be a problem. Uh, but nobody goes to the airport because it's surrounded by swamps. Any of the rioters try to get to the hotel, they'll drown in the swamps. Good riddance to them. Well, we 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 are no, not too far from Philly, are we? Uh, from from Toronto. Um, I've driven to Toronto to give seminars. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe a road trip. <laughs> there you go. What, eight hours. Eight yeah, hours. So or so. It is. We, we've driven up to Toronto. Actually, we've stayed overnight. I forget where. Just because there's so many scenic places on the way. Yeah. And I'm told that, the, and the New England, the the, uh, the the fall is gorgeous. Because we had a lot of rain this summer. So you have gorgeous foliage. Anyway, you, you drive down. It's very simple. It's pretty much a straight shot. And uh, we'd love to have you. Cool. We have some openings still available. If anyone's interested, just go to corinwellness.com. Thank you, Robert. I saw I that. Put you the did link that. Up there click on the tab for corn specific technique KST, and uh, you'll be able to uh, have a great time. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Korn, uh, Robert, do you have any more questions for Dr. Korn? I want to give him a couple of more minutes to give us. No, I'm good. I mean, I, I'm Thank just you. sitting here and posting links <laughs> and posting this stuff. I wasn't, supposed to be, I wasn't supposed to be here, but. She got me in because you're, I guess you were having technical difficulties and she I'm said, so you're the sorry. owner what of the company. Was, I'll just tell in. you, uh, a doctor called me who has cancer <laughs> and he wanted to consult. And I usually, I just sort of got wrapped up when I'm with a patient, I'm with a patient. I mean, I'm right there with them. It's like, there's nobody else around. Uh, and I, I forgot the time. That's so okay. my, please, please forgive me. My apologies. You are forgiven, Dr. Korn. This was it was uh, it was fun while waiting for you, and your your talk was awesome, amazing. You're so fantastic. You're so amusing, and you make it just fun learning from you. So I want to thank you for being here today, and I want to give you a couple of more minutes to uh, to take it out of the park, not like you haven't already. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I well, I mean, what I usually do is. Uh, when I give lectures, I start slow, and after a few minutes, I, I just grind to a halt completely, fall apart. So what do I do now? <laughs> um, I have been very fortunate in having severe injuries and accidents and health challenges with myself and my family. I say fortunate because it, they were really blessings in disguise. They actually permitted me to learn and not give up. And I realized that uh, there's no such thing as a coincidence in life. In fact, in the Hebrew language, there's no word for coincidence. Uh, and if it's not there in Hebrew, it doesn't exist. Everything has a meaning and a purpose. We can learn from them. In fact, somebody once told me that others are either uh, an example to follow or warning to stay away from. Anyway, we, uh, we're here to learn from each other and from, you know, ourselves and our families. There's no accidents. So I believe that, as I said, the, all these things that happened, cancer, chronic illness, um, oh, geez, uh, physical injuries, dental problems, all these things uh, gave me, learnt, taught me. In fact, and it's, this is, I've seen this over and over because I deal with a lot of now holistic dentists. And I don't think I know a single holistic dentist, it's very rare, that doesn't have a tragedy. I don't think I know a single natural healer, a really gifted healer, that doesn't have a tragedy in their lives, yes. which led them to start growing and learning. Uh, yes. so, uh, I guess I've been lucky. Although, as I said before, my new prayer is, maybe I didn't mention it, I have a new prayer it's God, please give me a blessing that's not in disguise for a change. Well, I, I agree with you, Dr. Corin. Every single person I've talked to uh, on uh, on the podcast or on Della's mm -hmm. voice has a story, and their story always involves uh, something deep that they've had to uh, learn to rise above. 
And that's, as a matter of fact, that's how they found out their passion is to help other people. And they use that experience to help others. And so thank you so much for bringing out your story to us today. I really appreciate your time. I know that you're a busy man. I want to thank you for um, the work you're doing and the, the work you put in in this book. And oh, the work. I enjoyed and the, having you. It, it, it's fabulous having you here. Uh, and it's, it is my honor to be a co-author in this book with you. And uh, so thank you so much, everybody else, for joining. There's lots of questions. Actually, I want to, uh, just for the interest of time, please uh, go to uh, Dr. Kern's website and uh, email him and find out information. Uh, there was one last question. I don't want to leave it before. Uh, so do you do online seminars? That was the question. We have a home study program. So the home study program. Yeah. So they can do the home study, which is a lot of fun, which people have mastered the work just on the home study. But there's nothing like a live seminar. No, it's you know, true. You can meet people, you get to chat. The energy is so incredible. Yeah. And uh, for me, I learn from every student. So I tell people, come to a seminar and teach me. <laughs> so maybe maybe we'll meet Dr. Curran at, at, uh, at your event. I know a couple oh, of people on here that. are Maybe we'll just do a road trip over to Philly and please, please <laughs> contact me, call me, write me. I'd love to see you. You know, I guess technically, pre COVID hysteria, we would have all met in Toronto, mm -hmm. yes, which would well, have been great for us. Of course, <laughs> I, I hope we will one day. Just yes, we will. For sure. I hope this insanity will be a thing of the past. Thank you, and then, and the certain and certain parties will be arrested. Yes. <laughs> yes. I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My fantasy is that Fauci and Bill Gates will share a prison cell together. Oh dear. <laughs> and one, with of, that. one of the few. One of the few. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank oh, you, everybody, for being here today. <laughs> I know we're to to you Yes, absolutely. Well, Adela, it's a pleasure to know you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Have a blessed day, everybody. <laughs>